Hey folks, in today's segment we're going to be talking about the posterior cruciate ligament of the knee. We're going to talk about its anatomy, its function, uh, the mechanism of injury that you would typically see, what a patient might present like uh, to your clinic with a PCL injury, uh, what to look for on exam and exam findings, as well as um, your treatment options for treating PCL injuries. So I uh, trust that you'll find this useful the next time you see a patient in their clinic that you suspect may have a PCL injury. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna review the posterior cruciate ligament. This is the final of the main ligaments that I wanted to review in my uh, little videos. I've done the MCL, the PC, or the MCL, the ACL, and the LCL to this point, and uh, we'll hit the PCL today. So. I've drawn my standard uh, left knee that I tend to use. So we've got our femur, our tibia, our fibula, and patella. So what is the anatomy of the PCL? So the anatomy starts on the inner aspect in the notch of the medial femoral condyle. So the medial femoral condyle on the inner aspect of the notch, inner notch and a little along the posterior half and it runs to the sulcus on the tibia just below the articular surface it runs to the sulcus of the tibia which is a little posterior centrally so what does that look like so it starts on the posterior aspect inner medial femoral condyle and runs to the sulcus of the tibia. So I have my knee model here as well. So we'll look at that. And if you're looking at it from behind, this is what it looks like. So it's along the medial femoral condyle and this is a right knee model where I've drawn the uh, left knee, but it's along the inner aspect of the medial femoral condyle and it runs kind of centrally towards the knee uh, towards the tibia and inserts in the sulcus of the tibia below the articular surface uh, as well as on the posterior aspect of that uh, lateral uh, portion of the joint there. So that's the distribution. So given that uh, location and anatomy, what is the PCL's function? So the PCL function is to prevent posterior translation of the tibia on the femur. So it prevents posterior tibial translation. So, given its anatomy and its function, how is the PCL injured? So, most commonly, it is injured from a direct blow on a flexed knee. So a direct anterior blow specifically. Direct anterior blow to a flexed knee. So in uh, you always hear about this as the dashboard injury. So a person riding along gets in a motor vehicle accident, they're thrown forward, their knees are flexed, and their, their tibia hits the dashboard, forcing it backwards, and that would uh, tear the PCL. Now, that's your, your textbook uh, answer, but it, it happens in other ways as well. It can happen with a hyperflexed knee and a plantar flexed ankle and other uh, traumatic means, uh, particularly in athletic competitions. Um, but again, you don't see the PCL injuries nearly as common as you see anterior cruciate ligament injuries. So we've gone over the anatomy, the function, the mechanism of injury. So a person that has a PCL injury, what do they present like? So they have to have a history. They have to have a mechanism for it. So uh, they have a, a fitting mechanism of injury. So if you have a football player that was running the ball, his foot was planted, the knee was flexed, and he took a, a blow to the front of the knee, and uh, then that is concerning because that's the, the classic mechanism. Uh, so they may or may not feel anything pop or snap. Uh, 
Uh, they uh, quite possibly have an effusion, depending on the degree of injury. Uh, they may or may not be weight bearing, again, depending on the degree of injury. Uh, instability, they generally don't have as much instability as, say, an ACL tear, so they may or may not. So how do you uh, figure out if they have a PCL tear from exam? There's really a couple of distant, different uh, tests for the PCL. The main one is the posterior drawer. This is where the patient is supine on the table, laying on their back. Their knee is flexed to approximately 90 degrees with their foot flat on the table. And you as the examiner has to stabilize the foot uh, to keep it from moving. So generally I'll, I'll use my thigh and kind of rest uh, almost sitting on their foot. And I'll place both of my hands around the knee and uh, around that flex knee. And I'll have, I'm going to demonstrate here on the model, but I'll have my thumbs on either side of the patellar tendon in the joint line. And I will pull forward, trying to pull that tibia forward to do an anterior drawer. And then for the posterior drawer, I will push back. Now, to decide whether or not there's instability, what you're really um, doing is you're really feeling to see how far you can push that tibia back and how much femur you feel under your thumbs as you push back. The more femur that you feel under your thumbs, the looser that knee is and the, the higher likelihood to have a PCL injury. The other test that I like to do is uh, it's really more of a, you're looking for a particular sign and it's called the SAG sign. For this, uh, again, the patient is lying supine on their back. You bring both patients, this is passive, you bring both of the patient's hips to 90 degrees, their knees are flexed to 90 degrees, and you're supporting under uh, the lower aspect of their calves or down uh, near the ankles, and you will look straight across at their knees at the tibial tubercle, and what you will be looking for is, is to see if the injured knee's tibial tubercle rests uh, lower or further posterior than the unaffected knee. If you do see that, that is an indicator that that PCL is injured and there's posterior instability. So uh, the exam findings are posterior drawer and SAG sign. <clears throat> Imaging. X-rays are generally negative, but you need to get X-rays to rule out other potential injury. The imaging study of choice for PCL injuries is the MRI. Now, here's where there's a bit of uh, controversy, and that is in terms of treatment. Well, initial treatment, if you're in a, um, on an athletic field sideline or urgent care or primary care office, your treatment is going to be initially uh, your standard uh, conservative care to get them to ortho, and that's going to include your rice, uh, crutches as needed if they're unable to weight bear. NSAIDs or non-opioids as needed. Um, bracing, if there's feeling instability, um, if you can't get x-rays to rule out fracture, you may want to, to brace uh, with an immobilizer, but um, you know, certainly if you can rule out fracture, bracing is not necessary. Now, if you are in the uh, definitive care role, uh, even with complete PCL tears uh, in certain populations, you can treat this conservatively with uh, PCL bracing and physical therapy. Uh, there have been um, several high-level athletes that have sustained PCL tears and done just fine uh, after uh, thorough rehab using a uh, specific PCL brace and uh, they, they have good uh, careers. Uh, there is some controversy as to whether or not in the long run there'll be uh, expedited arthritic um, development or not, <clears throat> but conservative treatment of PCL injuries is certainly an option.
My memory card filled up right at that last bit, but I finished by stating that if high-level active people, especially if they have PCL instability symptoms, reconstruction would be the preferred treatment. All right, that wraps up our PCL segment. I hope you found it helpful, um, particularly the next time you see a patient that you suspect may have a PCL injury in your clinic. So if you have uh, found benefit from this, I would love it if you'd hit subscribe down below. And uh, if you check out other videos, including the ACL, MCL, or uh, LCL videos, which you can find in the corners. So, again, I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed putting out this content for you, and I can't wait to get more out for you soon. Thank you.